What's up? I'm Jack. Welcome back to the LFC Transfer Room. Today's video is an opposition preview ahead of Liverpool's match against Crystal Palace on Saturday in the Premier League. Joining us today is Matt Wisdom to tell us all about Crystal Palace and give us the insight ahead of Saturday's encounter. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get into the video. Out goes Roy Hodgson, in comes Patrick Vieira. What has been the big changes for Crystal Palace as they have undergone a serious change at the very top of the managerial structure? Oh, it's been massive changes. Like It's a completely new sort of set up, a completely new way of playing. Um, a whole host of new players. I think it's something like I think it's six new signings. Um, but Palace are a much more possession-based, attacking-based team. And anyone who watched them under Hodgson will know that that was really not the case last season. Anyone who watched the the game at Liverpool at the end of the season um, will know that that was not the case at all last year for Palace. And they really struggled towards the end, I think, under Hodgson. Um, and everyone kind of got a bit tired of it. Um, but at the same time, he did what you know, he did a very good job at Palace, and he enabled them to get where they got with letting all those players go in the summer. They let uh, I think ten players go who are out of contract, um, and you know brought those players in, and and they're playing a lot more attacking. The formations change, so at, at least at times last season it was a four four two, occasionally like a a four two three one. Um, but this season under Vieira, it's uh, a sort of a four, four, one, two, three, if you like. A four, people call it a four, three, three, but I prefer to be a bit more specific to kind of get in the specific changes. So you've got a, a defensive player, a holding midfielder. Um, that's generally been Czech Kiate, um up in the air as to whether that'll be Luka Milivojevic against Liverpool. He's now back after personal issues. Um, but uh, yeah, so then you've got two players, two centre mids, two number eights ahead of that. And then you've got the front three of which has been Wilfred Saha, Christian Benteke and Jordan Ayew. But as I say, Michael Elise um, is back from injury, played 60 minutes, Palace under 23s. And I think it was a 6-1 win against Leicester in the week. Um, so he'll be in contention to play, but it's a much better team in terms of going forward. Um, you could argue perhaps that they've kind of lost a bit of defensive solidity, um, but yeah, I think everyone's a bit excited by this new style of play. Fresh off a 3-0 win against Spurs, the mood is pretty high for Crystal Palace. Expectations are tempered, but there's reason for optimism for them. Um, I think evidently after the, the victory um, at the weekend, with odds on Edouard coming off the bench and scoring twice, everyone's in quite positive mood. Um, but I think people have to be and will be realistic that you know playing Liverpool at Anfield it, it doesn't get too much harder than that. So I think you've got to be realistic. Um, you know, Palace got a pretty decent squad at the moment actually with you know Michael Elise coming back from injury and sorry Elise and and Edward up front. Um, so I think there's reason to be positive, but I don't think anyone realistically is expecting Palace to win. New signing Osan Edouard in just seven minutes scored two goals against Spurs in his debut for Crystal Palace. So he could rival Christian Benteke, former Liverpool man, to take that number one, to take the number nine spot and lead the line for the visiting team. My head says that he will probably stay on the bench just because he hasn't really had a lot of time, uh, hasn't obviously played much. He came on for, I think, seven minutes. So. I would have thought if Fiera was considering starting him, then he would have probably brought him on a bit earlier. Although that said, the game was kind of in a different position, so maybe not. But I think maybe I have to wait another week or so for for Edouard to start a game. Um, you know, Benteke also offers you a bit perhaps more defensively than Edouard. And when you're playing Liverpool at Anfield, you're going to need that you know, player to hold the ball up. Not, not that not that Odson Edouard can't do that, but you know, Benteke is so strong in the air. Um, I think that will play to Palace's strengths. So Palace undoubtedly looking to pull an upset against Liverpool. What are the weaknesses that Liverpool can look to try and expose? Uh, the fullbacks. Um Tyreek Mitchell had an absolutely outstanding game against Spurs. Um and 
I think Joel Ward has, has been an absolutely fantastic servant for Palace over the years, but you know, he's getting on a bit, if you like, in football terms for a fullback. Um and he doesn't have the pace that you know, maybe Liverpool have obviously got a lot of pace in their team, uh, a lot of skill and technical ability, which will cause Ward and cause most fullbacks in the Premier League, let's be honest, most fullbacks in the Premier League will struggle um, at times against them. So I, I wouldn't be hugely surprised to see them like target Joel Ward. For Palace, what are the keys for them to try and break down Liverpool and try and make the most of their opportunities at Anfield? So I, I think it's got to be that that attack. You know, Saha, Wilfred Saha was absolutely unplayable um, in that second half against Spurs. Um, he has a quiet has he's had a quiet start to the season, um, and last season he wasn't quite. Even though he scored quite a lot of goals, I think he scored eleven last season. Uh, even then, he wasn't quite his best in terms of you know, running down marauding down that wing. Um, so I think you know naturally. Yeah, he's still a very good player, so they're going to have to be cautious of him and, and aware of him. Um, not sure if, if Milner's around, but uh, I think he's got him sent off the last couple of times he's played him. So, um, But there's also Conor Gallagher in the number eight position. He's been absolutely fantastic this season. Um, you can really see why... Uh, Chelsea rate him so highly um, and you know obviously did well with West Brom but he's been absolutely on another level um, and he gets into that space really well so if anyone leaves space for him then he will just exploit that and get into those spaces and then if a teammate can pick him out then you know I think that that will leave Liverpool vulnerable so they just got to be aware of that really um, so that that's the main thing for me is is Gallagher and Saha if those two are on form then certainly it's going to be a, a, a good opportunity for Palace. So let's take a look at the tactics for this match. So it's going to be actually two very similar shapes, two, four, three, threes, more or less. You know, Matt specified it as a four, one, two, three, four, um, Crystal Palace with Czech Kuyate or Milivojevic to play the defensive holding midfield role. It can be very important for Liverpool and for Crystal Palace just to try and mitigate Liverpool's midfield presence. Off of uh, Thiago, I think not getting the start against um, AC Milan could suggest that he comes back into the starting lineup. Maybe you see a change at the very back line for Liverpool. Maybe you bring in an Ibrahim Kanate for a debut. It was just that he could either make a debut against Norwich in the Carabao Cup or in this match at Anfield on Saturday. So really it's gonna be two very similar shapes and Palace definitely gonna have to make the most of their chances, but chances have been afforded. Liverpool haven't been as airtight defensively as they have been in recent years. The front three of Jota, Salah, and Mane should return. You'd imagine that Origi, although he, in my opinion, was okay um, getting an assist against Milan, I think that Mane comes back. I think that he was mainly a rotationary piece. I think Henderson, Thiago, and Fabinho is probably the midfield that will be used. Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold, I think, maintain their places as well. Only other question mark for Liverpool, who plays next to, to Van Dijk, who I think should make a return to the starting lineup after being benched for Matip and Joe Gomez. Maybe Gomez comes in, Matip gets a rest. I imagine he will be taken out because you don't want to play Matip three matches in a week. That might be a bit too much for a guy who has had injury problems. Wilfred Zaha, definitely a danger man for Crystal Palace, either playing on the left or the right, alongside Ben Teke. There are a lot of different options they can throw at. Tyreek Mitchell's been a decent left back option for them, developing quite a bit. So Crystal Palace have their threats, and it's clear that they definitely have a shot at Anfield. But Liverpool, if things go well, they should take the match. What are your thoughts on the match? And let us know your, your predictions and your thoughts on what the match should look like at Anfield on Saturday. Thanks very much to Matt for coming on to the channel. We appreciate his insight as always. His links can be found in the description down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more pre-match, during the match, and post-match content and everything else you need for Liverpool Football Club. It's all right here on the LFC Transfer Room. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I've been Jack, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.